Hey, CBF. Yeah? Yeah, you know, I, you know, we're just sitting here, just eating this really good ramen, such, such great ramen, by the way. Yeah, and yeah, just a couple of bros with our mugs and everything, so we can forget about that fucking verbal A's video. Oh man, that was that was a wild ride. That aside, uh, Coomer nonsense aside, um, oh, I just wanted to point out something. Coomer nonsense. Yeah, I want yeah, well, we'll get to that. But what I wanted to start off with something first. Uh, you know what I've noticed? Yeah? I think I I think I know what you're talking about, Kaz, and I think I've noticed it too. Yeah, I, I've noticed that we are no longer in the cafe. Yeah, no. Now that you mention it, we are indeed no longer in the cafe, Kaiser. It took you guys this long to notice that our thing is no longer a cafe? No, no, but, well, well, well in, the, the, the thing is, it's the, the thing, thing. It's that not, kind of... The, here, it's not, it's not about the cafe, it's about you in relation to the cafe. Because, you know, you were always saying, who and hawing about, like, how you're the one who is, uh, taking care of the cafe and we are just mooching off of you, so... But we're no longer there! We're, we're not here, I don't see the cafe here at all, do you, Lone Crit? No, I do not! No, we are no longer As a matter of fact, I don't see it at all. In fact... As a result, I don't even work anymore. I'm just lost in this alternate dimension thingamafuck or whatever. Like a shadow city, if you will. Like a shadow futo. We'll, we'll get to that, so uh, I was gonna say, well, Kaiser and I just agreed that maybe it's time you, um, you pack away the lube and lose some of the attitude, my good friend. I'll do that when you fuckers stop getting me killed, or at least apologize for that one time you murdered me in cold blood. You know, it was it was a circumstantial necessity, really. It wasn't. It genuinely wasn't, and you put me in an inferior body for it that I got out of first chance I could. Your mother deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> I see the homophobia still got strong. <laughs> listen, 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 okay? The the live streams I've been doing lately are all in service of that theme, okay? My homophobia levels are rising. So he admits Oh it. my goodness. He wasn't even talking about you, but you admitted it anyway. Oh, I thought since, yo, know, both me and CBF listen, yeah, are- shit. I thought me and CBF- <laughs> Since we're both Ruby haters, uh, I thought that that came with the with the job. Nope. No, 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 no. Sh shut up. We're not making this into a Ruby episode. No. We're talking about a good show today, Kaiser. We can save that for another time when we really feel like giving Lonecrit everything he deserves. So yeah, this is the point where I switch sides. Kaiser, this is where CBF and I team up and decide if we are or are not going to filter you. <laughs> Because, yeah, we saw not the Shirobako movie, we still haven't gone around to that. Yet. Yet. Just like the other many things we haven't gone around to, but instead, Lonkrit got me to watch, and then eventually got you to finish Kamen Rider Double, the anime. Futo P.I. A.K.A. Futo Tante. Or as certain uh, mechanical scrubs in the room would say, Futo P. Ah, uh, yes. Lonker remembers when you called I, it I that. remember Futo P. And I remember it so you don't have to, CBF, no matter how much you want to forget. I still can't believe you thought it was called Futo P. Penis. <laughs> yes, you are, but what am I? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, speaking of speaking of penis, this show. Yeah, speaking of cocks, we're all cocksuckers here because that's what we do with Shotaro every day, including in this show. Yeah, speaking of cock, Shotaro was really thinking with his in this show. He always thought the of his in the show. The directors and writers were thinking with that in this show, dude. <laughs> Just as much as in Still the, the, in the show, the movie. In, in the original show, and that movie that none of us think is very good. Still not as bad as the movie. I don't know, that final arc is definitely on that level at times. Yeah, man. It was definitely way worse than anything in the show, in the original show, in that regard. 
I don't know, man, like, the sexual energy in that scene with, like, Philip and, like, and his not mother. Uh, that scene where the only female member of the Never Squad comes in, magically doesn't have her jacket anymore, in a tank top, sopping wet, leaning forward. I hate that this is how we're introducing the new character, Tokime, but then again, the way she was introduced in the very first minutes of the first episode wasn't that great either. But the fact that in the 11th episode, we have like this one kid just freezing Tokime, forcing her to strip while she looks very exhausted in a way where her face is drawn in a very specific way. And we get to see several close-ups and everything while she is forced to do this against her will while that one kid is reveling in it just like the camera is yeah uh, the, the, come on, come on, in get the camera, the camera. it's on a similar level as that like philip and older chick scene from the movie and again the cam the and the camera was going fairy tale levels of ogling yeah no, come on, no, it was not going fairy tale levels. It was, it, dude. It did. You, you haven't seen it. It could have ogled way more. Well, yes, but Excuse we're, me? we're hitting Lo baseline oh, fairy hold up, tale. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Excuse me, Kaiser? What? What did I say? Say that again? Did you, have, did you say I've not seen fairy tale? I'm saying, I'm saying, I don't know if you've seen fairy tale. I bet I've seen more than you. I bet I've seen more than you. How much have you seen? <laughs> I've seen I've seen enough, and I think Spit if, a you're, if you're Spit trying a to, if you're Spit trying, a number, if right, you're trying to say Spit you've a seen number. <laughs> number number put a number on it. I don't fucking know. How many episodes? I don't know. Like I've skimmed through about like a hundred or two. Did you hear that, Sibi? If he skimmed, oh, he skimmed. How lovely, How Kaiser. Wonderful. I watched upwards of two hundred. I have, I have seen, but wait, I've seen more. I think as the well. fact that you, I think the fact that you are taking so much offense to how much you've seen Fairy Tale proves how much of an L you're taking right now, dude. I, I have that is to true. Like... Fairy Tale is kind of mid, and I don't think you should be that proud to admit that you've seen more than two hundred plus episodes. I'll admit I've seen both seasons. Like, I will admit that I've seen both seasons 1 and 2. Not season 1 in its entirety, I skipped the Edelus arc. But still... I watched upwards of 200 episodes and read a good among, amount of the sequel manga, so maybe... And I read Fairy Tale Zero, so maybe let's not talk about how much Fairy Tale I have or haven't watched, okay? Well, to be fair, Fairy Tale Zero, that, 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 that is literally just the final part of Season 2 anyway. But we're not talking about a mediocre battle shown in here. We're talking about a good battle toku anime. Yeah, let's just, like, skip the bit about Tokime. My stance on this is- Let's go back to Tokime, but let's talk about the fact that one of the anime's better accomplishments is that, well, outside of the intro, she was in- <laughs> They did a good job with her. pretty good. Yeah. I will say, I would have preferred if she did a little bit more. Yeah. Same. I would have liked it if she were in the mansion story. It felt like uh, a lot of Tokime was kind of, like, backloaded. Because, like, we didn't see her, like, Tokime-ing in the first story. And she had some cool stuff in the second story. But, like... But then the third story, she was, like, mostly uninvolved until literally the tail end. Which, to a certain extent, I can understand. Because you don't want to pull a Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains and bring on this new character that is, like, all up in the audience's face and gives very little room for the other characters to shine. Yeah, you don't want a spotlight stealing squad scenario. You don't want Masamune Kadoya from Beyblade yeah. <laughs> Metal Masters to just come in, steal everyone's spotlight, and okay, throw guys, half our characters. Guys, in the guys, group. guys, let's um, let's let's change the subject. But like, generally, this actually does tie a little bit into a problem I do have with the anime. Like, sure, they do have a generally pretty good job of integrating Tokime with the main cast. She is a, a very nice addition, even if I do think maybe some bits of her development were fast-tracked. But one problem with the show, it kind of comes in conjunction with some of my later problems with later Comrade Double. It's how the characters kind of refuse to use the tools they have until it is very convenient for the plot to be like, all right, we gotta wrap this shit up now. I get it because you don't want to introduce the extreme memory and like, all of their gadgets in the first arc or anything. 
you don't want to overload the new people coming in. But, uh, it, it would have been nice if we at least got an explanation as to why they're not using, say, the Fang Joker until the second arc, or especially the Extreme Memory until the end of the third arc. Nine episodes in out of twelve. Especially because with the Extreme Memory, he made such quick work out of the alcohol dope ad in that third story that realistically speaking, Shotaro and Philip could have used that and ended the first two arcs halfway through. At the latest. Yeah. Well, okay, if you want to be a buzzkill about this. Especially in this case because someone, you know, died. <laughs> yeah, people can actually die in this show now. Like, oh yeah, god, that scene where you see like the dinosaur dopant in the final story just eat another dopant in the air. Or the fact that the first story involves the road dopant eating people. Yes. Like, victims in the previous story, because you know, Kamen Rider was, is a kid's show. I assume that in most Kamen Rider's in toku shows, they're not gonna have a whole bunch of people being massacred. But in this one, no. The gloves about are off. This that. is all manga now. We don't have to worry about any kids' show restrictions for our day show time about slot. About that. About that. About that. About that. Kaizo, want to explain some of the body count from Kuga to CBF? Ooh, I think we're, we're talking about at least in the hundreds, nearly to the thousands. Okay, so correction, they didn't do this for Kamen Rider Double, then. In Kamen Rider Double, it's usually like, oh, they were kidnapped and turned into coins, or they were kidnapped, or maybe some of them were injured by a weird doll that tried to kill them. I will say, oh, that, that's still <laughs> the funniest thing in Double. I will hilarious. say, though, in, um, I will say, though, in Kuga, there's literally a grongi that, like, beheads people mid-air yes. so cleanly that their heads, like, stay on their bodies and then walks past them pulls out to them, and if they turn around, their heads fall clean off. Damn. But yeah, now in this show, we're allowed to have people die, and we're allowed to have a, a decent amount of blood and gore. Well, maybe not gore, but blood. This one... Isn't there also a grongi that eats children? There's a grongi that does something with children. I don't know if I don't know if it eats them, but they do something with kids. The, the porcupine grongi. Yeah, I think it just kills them. But yeah, in every sense of the word, this anime is darker, including the fact that the setting takes place much more at night than in the original, because like in the original show, things tend to take place in the day- in broad daylight in some shape or form. It is not often that a scene would take place at night outside. But nah, in this show, I mean, more often than not, the stuff will take place at night. We get to see the city from a nocturnal point of view. Which is an interesting idea. Which makes it cooler in a lot of ways. Yeah, it yeah. does. By the way, speaking of like having like a greater resource to make things happen, can we just talk a little bit about like how much good it being an anime did for the way a lot of the memories are portrayed? Yes. Yeah. It does so many better favors because you don't have to like grapple with the CGI and other like sparkle effects with the memories and shit. And it definitely did the maximum drives, you know, the special moves that Doubled uses so much oh, better yeah. favors. They look so, so fucking clean. Oh yeah, like Shoro's Turbo Gotaro moment in like the final episode of the second act where he like knows he's gonna take the hit from like the, uh, the enemy dope hands. So he does the metal maximum a overdrive where he like nails it like behind him he nails it in the stomach With the and makes it do gadget. kind of the beetle clamp yeah like yo also that was the first episode of that story but that was one that was one of the peak shotaro goading moments we don't tend to get that many in double in the double anime we don't tend to get like highs that are as high as the highs in that show but this one this was one of the moments that definitely came close it definitely was up there just like him going for that call and knowing that, and then afterwards he's like, all right, get Teddy Ryu in the show. Get him in here now. I am going to be out of commission for a while. And then even despite that in the next episode, he still tries to be there for Tokime, who at this point has become his assistant now that her name has been cleared. And then it, it was a, a scene for her and also for one of the new people who hired him. That was a nice one. And then after his pep talk, he just starts bleeding out again. Oh yeah, that was really funny. Yeah. The, the second arc definitely did a lot of favors for pretty much almost all the characters involved, really. I think in terms of the interactions, I think it probably had some of the best. Yeah. 
I think it was really impactful how, like, Shiro gives his speech and he's, like, visibly, like, unhealthy. And then he, like, falls in Tokime's arms and, like, you know, she looks at her hand behind his back and it's just covered in blood. Yeah. <laughs> this has fucking holes in him, like, fucking, he's 50 cent. Yeah, an interesting, another interesting thing was the fact that we're no longer doing the two episode format that a lot that Common Rider Double did. No, there are three episodes oh my for four stories, which I think it worked out fine, but it could have definitely been a bit tighter in places, especially the first two stories. Yeah, I really felt the runtime sometimes. I think maybe the first story could have been much better as like two episodes. Yeah, I agree. And definitely the third story would have been better as two episodes. I started getting that feeling in the middle of the second episode, once the Scream Dome pen was introduced in there, but I think the third episode managed it to work well enough. Unlike the other two stories where the final episode felt like it dragged on a little, this one was like, no, nah, the middle episode made me worry a little bit. And then the final arc might technically be the best paced, but might actually be the worst arc of the four. Oh, come on. It is not a bad arc, but it does have all of my issues with the show and some of the stuff we complained about earlier in what we just talked about as well. It's not as low as like the very weak stories in Double. There were some stories in Double that were just straight up mediocre. But I don't think any story is like reaching the highs of that original show yet either. Oh yeah, that goes without saying. I mean, come on, what did you expect? By the way, the flutter kick, a rider kick that, like, they did in the extreme form against the reactor dopant, it was stupid when they did it on the, um, Utopia dopant, and it's stupid now. It's way less stupid now, it's though. It's way less it's stupid It's significantly now. less stupid. You might conceivably be able to take it seriously here. Yeah. yeah. And it does help that, as you said, just the animation in the show is generally really good, and this means we no longer have to rely on CG for especially flight battles. We no longer need people to turn into these just giant CG monstrosities rampaging across town or flying while Shotaro has to use a motorcycle or fly in a weird contra- in a vehicle contraption hung up by wires or whatever. No, we can actually have good aerial battles. Yeah, there, especially since there's only- there's only been one- one giant monster in this show, too. I really like that one fight in, like, the first story where the road to Dopant is making, like, roads yeah. in the air. And you have that, like, that cool-ass, like, chase sequence, like, in the app. By the way, who else pogged when they played the uh, remix of the original theme as the inside? I did. <laughs> yeah. I absolutely did. And that was one of the few times where I actually noticed CG. Because in this one, they only did it for when Shotaro was in a motorcycle. And it, for the most part, didn't look that bad. Especially in the chase sequence, in the in the actual chase against the dopants. I like how this show makes the wind memory so much cooler. Yes. It's like, remember when they just, uh, they did like a windshield with a wind memory to like block the projectile? Oh, also, who else like pogged when like the, the road memory was like, and the road the dopant was reaching for Tokime? And then it thinks it has her, and Shoto's like, sorry bud, and the smoke clears away to reveal is the arm of the lunar memory. Yeah. I'm like, oh. That was really Aww. smart. Just smart uses of the mem memories and shit is something that I've always liked in the show and I wish that were, like, utilized a little bit more. Especially the combination of, like, Trigger and Luna, which I feel could have saved their butts a lot more. It's OP. It's OP is what it is. Yeah, it's pretty damn OP. It's an aimbot shot. It definitely does feel like half the time they're- half the time they're either using their stuff to the best of their ability, or they're just not using anything at all because we have to keep the runtime going. To be fair, guys, I'm sorry, do you want Shotaro to be a spawn camper? Because that's what you want. You want him to be that- one of those douchebags no, that sticks I don't, back and like keeps firing. Him, I don't want him. I don't want him to be Jesus Yamato. <laughs> no, thank you. Ah, <laughs> uh, but man, in any case, it's just like the four arcs are generally pretty solid. Again, the first one is more of an introduction to Tokime that makes us first think that there's something dubious about her. Except, no, nah, it turns out she was a red herring for the road dopod. But it does introduce us to this shadow Futo concept. The second arc involves uh, Microsoft. I'm not calling up what the name is in the show because I forgot. But it's basically just <laughs> Microsoft. Yeah. With their the second back? Yeah, like Ma oh, I think it was Macrosoft, but which is obviously a play on Microsoft. I guess, but it's not Microsoft. Come on, they're just like a small like 
video game film. Yeah, but it's Microsoft in name only. We get what they're referencing. Yeah, I guess. Like as a as a as a mobile phone fighting game developer with an idol mascot, and the actual person in, behind that was pretty solid as well. And I liked. That one in the third story had the most twists and turns regarding, like, Red Herrings and who actually was responsible for it and why. It actually had me, like, in the second story, a bit way less so in the third story. But I did like the reaction from the Red Herring in the third story the best. Yeah. Oh, by the way, yeah, I really like... I uh, thing is, the third story kind of started dragging a bit for me. I didn't mind the screen memory, just so we could see, like, Terry doing something. Yeah. Uh, I didn't mind as much as CBF. I will say, though, in some ways it kind of dragged, but I do like how it, like, has the guy, and, like, he ends up being really cool by the end, and Shudder's like, hey, would you like to go for a cookie? He's like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, that guy who was introducing this whole Fox marriage concept, while being, uh, when everyone had their mask, and he was just looked like the most ostentatious douchebag ever and he was like oh no and the drink that was actually apple cider by the way this is that was just for presentation purposes i just couldn't let people know that while everyone's serving alcohol yeah and it was in he in under all of that he he genuinely loves his family and is actually pretty self-reflective. And even the grandmother who organized all of this, like, she was already just like this tiger protecting everyone in the shadows and using her alcohol dope end for this purpose as well. And she's like, you know what? I'm gonna die soon. I'm gonna do this so that I could have a successor to take on my role for the family for me. And then everything got burned down. She's like, all right, just let it burn, like, grandson. Yeah, everything's gonna burn. You gotta make, you gotta make it on your own now. I believe in you, kid. This is for the best. Our family is pretty corrupt, and I did this. By the way, which of the four girls from that arc is the hottest? This is the real question. Hey, that's what we ask you first off podcast. You're, you answer that That doesn't first. count. That doesn't count. It count. CBF, do you say it counts? It counts. You. We asked you for an answer. You give your answer first. 2v1, each shit. God damn. Stop blue-balling us. Stop yanking our chain. This isn't Sherlock. And may we remind you that we did not consent. Anyways, um, <laughs> I think, uh, I think I really liked, um, what's her name, Kana the most. Okay, you know what, for me it's like her or the redhead one. Really? I didn't think you liked the redhead. It is a very close match between, like, the redhead girl, the silver-haired girl with the Chinese dress, and Kana, the black-haired girl who saved everyone, who saved the main characters at the beginning. So none of us like the blonde chick. <laughs> No, not really. They're all definitely attractive, but as far as, like, the uniforms and everything is concerned, the others go, but then again, none of it matters anyway, because Toki Mae clears all. Yes. Yeah, true. This is true. Also, wait how I like three out of four of them, CBF. Uh, talk about the discrimination. <laughs> what? By the way, remember when, like, the Silverhead one was gonna kill Kana, and then immediate next episode, Oh, yeah, we good now, let's go drinking! Yeah, and just, like, that was turned out to not even be Kana, it was just Philip bringing back the cross-dressing as well, because he's like, you know what? We've made a habit out of the fact that I have the phys physique for this. Like, when he did in the original show, and just... <laughs> it had Akiko just being very salty and also questioning her gender identity for a moment. Oh yeah, that was funny. <laughs> that was funny. By the way, CBF, have you gotten used to, like, Shotaro's VA yet? Yeah, I've gotten used to Shotaro's new VA. It Told is you. definitely not how... <laughs> Show Ren Kiriyama. Yeah, it is not the Ren goat. Kiriyama. The goat. Definitely, sh Philip's VA sounded very much closer. A lot like Philip. Yeah. Yeah, like almost like near identical. I like there's only just a slight difference in their voices, but they're basically just the same. It's a really good impression. What was a little hard to get used to was the new designs, because like Shadow's design. It's definitely more yeah. be shonen. Ooh, a new Terui. Terui's the worst example where he definitely just he looks, looks way like more generic. Basically, kind of. Yeah, he looks like more of a bishi boy. Again, he's like freaking Kuroko no Basuke or the new Legend of the Galactic Heroes with by production or, IG. Or 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 like freaking uh freaking Yuri on Ice over. <laughs> Look, on the bright side, we got to see, like, the, the Axel trial form do more cool things, because anime. That is true. True. In Philip's form, I was also, like, iffy on getting used to with, like, the green hair, and then the bits, where it's just, like, a much, much darker shade of green. I did like the touch where he has, like, these big paper clips in his hair instead of, like, proper hair clips. That is so Philip. 
Yeah, I, I like that a lot, because it feels like such a Philip move where he doesn't give a shit about fashion, so he just, like, yank, yanks whatever off his desk that works. Yeah. True, which is probably why I can also kind of buy, like, well, I wish he the, the hair wasn't green. I think that's what threw me off. Yeah, like, I get it because of green cyclone, but still. Yeah, it's, it's very obvious. By the way, to bring it in, I really like the music for this show. I don't like the soundtrack as much as the original, but, but I feel I we've like, got I, I appreciate the effort that they actually changed it up. Yeah, I think they have, like, the same music composer or something. A lot of very cool new isn't Yeah, Kozuru Nakagawa, which I am so, so... Uh, I'm ashamed of all of us for not talking about in the original episode, because, man, the music in that show is... is excellent. Great excellent. And jazz stuff. And this one is, like, it's still pretty good. He got another composer with him as, like, as well. So I think a lot of the new tracks were him. And the new tracks are, like, not, not as good, but still a fair amount of solid ones, even if I don't think I'll remember any of them. The OP for this one's also pretty good. It's a much more energetic it's vibe. A pop. Yeah. And the ED by, uh, I forget his name, but the one who. Mitsuru Matsuoka. Yeah, the um, Kamen Rider Eternal from that movie we don't like. <laughs> that was a pretty solid bop. Oh, yeah, dude. The, the ED is like a turbo bop. I it's love really it. It's really fun. Yeah, I don't like it as much as you guys do, but it's still solid. And I, I do think the OP is still pretty good, even if I do slightly prefer the original OP. Yeah, we all Everyone do. Everyone does. Uh, still, I do like to see the gang dicking around. Also, a lot of the inserts, some of them feel like... They feel like we have Kamen Rider double at home. They feel a bit like discount Kamen Rider double. <laughs> some of the insert tracks yeah, just feel... Yeah, you keep saying inserts when you mean background tracks. Also, Shuhei Naruse did a lot of the music for this too. That's a new artist for that I'm, one too. I'm just saying they feel like some of the inserts and in, in the whatever backgrounds in double, but just, you know, not as much. But, you know, whatever. Same for the characters a little bit. Like, uh, Shotaro, but still. How do we rank the stories? Because I'm gonna go... Three? Two? And... Maybe one and four are, like, about equal. Personally, I would have put, like, maybe two overall over three. But otherwise, everything else is the same, basically. Yeah, I'd say either two or three neck and neck. Maybe two. I, I, I'd have to struggle more. Maybe two above three. And then one and then four. I did not like the intro to one. I don't like it. It's weird because every time they started off with Begins Night in the main show and this one, it doesn't work out and some other stuff just didn't work out. But afterwards, it got rolling. Whereas the final one's not bad. And I do like the way it ends. It flowed really nicely. But there were definitely some stuff and especially that middle episode that were just kind of rough like we talked about and the fact that the road dopants are now just mooks that the main characters can all one shot even though they're supposed to be the better stronger candidates and the main road dopant in the first one was so troublesome also where do they get so many people to eat without people noticing yeah like i said dude we're talking about like they had like hundreds of those guys in one screen look right? look guys let's sidestep this lo the logistics of this make no goddamn sense i do like the final villain though or why bando cool design by the way keeps being like you know what H how about we just learn more about these common writers he could reasonably kill them at any time with how powerful he is but then he always chooses not to and then the final arc he's like you know what we should avoid confrontation with these guys who we know everything about and know are weaker than us as much as possible. It's like, Bondo, what are you doing? Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is what it is. By the way, I believe we all agree that this show's a 7, right? It's a step below the original show, but you know, it's neat entertainment and it feels like a nice victory lap, a nice excuse to see the characters more. Yeah. Also, Shoro finally kisses a girl! Shoro finally kisses a girl! Mm, my boy! My boy! Well, the girl kissed my him! Tokime kissed him! And I really do wish they did more with their relationship, but it was still nice what we got sometimes. And again, she does get integrated to the cast decently well, even though hopefully the rest of the manga, when that gets adapted, does more with her. That said, I don't think what we have here is a 7. I say it's a 6. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, I dislike how she's a damsel in distress in the last episode, but it kind of offsets that, because she does get, and like, and she's like, kind of objectified and victimized a bit. 
She does some cool things though, but yeah, for me this is like a high 6 to a low 7. Yeah, I'd say this is like a- if the main show was like a decent to strong 7, this is like a light to decent 7. It's not the lows that the first show had, but it does carry a lot of the same issues, plus the new stumbling blocks of being the intro- trying to be more of an introductory thing for new fans in an awkward way, and, but it doesn't have the highest highs of the original show either. It's- it's a decent balance. I appreciate this in terms of like potential like common Rider anime media as well. Yeah, look, it's a good excuse to spend more time in the characters, but- And the second story had the most pathos, and the third one definitely had the most interesting setup and like twists and turns, but yeah, solid detective stuff. Yeah. Anyway, this leads me to my next question though, CVF. Yeah? What Kamen Rider installment are you gonna be watching next? Kaiser and I are anxious to hear. I don't know, maybe Fize, maybe Kiva? I'm saving Kuga for at least a little later, until I get more under my belt, but yeah, man. 